Hello, good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Good. I, I, I don't know what it is, but like when it's bright and sunny outside in the morning, it's so much easier to get up. Like, and I just feel like so much happier. Whereas like the other morning when it was like very foggy and, mm -hmm. you know, that morning was just like, oh, I just wanted to yeah. grow up with, with, <laughs> with a blanket and my yes. coffee and read my book some more. But that's like, not unhappy. Like it's no, like, not unhappy. But you said like, you're happier when this, you wake up and it's bright and sunny. Yes. Yeah. I'm even in the mornings. I'm, I'm always a yeah. bath in the morning. I'm always grumpy in the morning, but um, uh, yeah, you know, sunlight makes it better. <laughs> I yeah, it's I easier to deal with. Yeah, I think when the sun is out, it's easier to get out of bed, but it doesn't really impact my mood at all, especially in the summertime when it is so hot. The sun just reminds me of how miserable I'm going to be all day. <laughs> there is that, yeah. But it would be so nice if the humidity would drop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I wake up and there's air conditioning and you don't feel hot, mm -hmm. it's okay for a little yeah, while. Yeah, you can forget for a little while. I was, uh, right before the show, I um, went to go liberate a bug I found in my house out, out the front door. And uh, yeah, I just I opened it up and I was like, oh, because yeah, you're in here and you think it might be okay. Today might be fine. Maybe today I'll go for a walk. But <laughs> I just, and I see people going past my window, walking and running and just good for them. Right. <laughs> It's like right now I let my dog out. He does not dilly dally. He's like, I'm going to go after it's going to I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. That, it, you open the door to let him out. And it's just like, ugh, it is gross out there today. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> it's nice for a break. But I know that plenty of people don't feel that way. They feel sad to know that colder weather is coming. So hopefully they're deeply enjoying these days because if they're not, then it's really not worth it. <laughs> I, I I do kind of like though those, maybe not quite this early, but like in September, once you start getting those those fog, you feel happy and content and are wearing one thing, and by afternoon you're <laughs> like, oh right, it's still ninety degrees. Uh, well, I went to the main library where we have to dress in layers anyway because every floor is a different temperature. <laughs> do it. <laughs> this is true. Good morning, Carrie. I'm How are you? Dressing, I'm used to dressing in a t-shirt all year round because my office is so warm from sun beating in, which again, grateful to have the window, but climate control is just it's <laughs> always it's never it's gonna be cold. <laughs> now, I always said that the library had two temperatures, too hot and too cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Well, are you good reading? morning, Judith? Are you reading anything good? Um, I have to confess, I have gone back to Outlander. I want to, I want to, I want to reread the Outlander series before um, mm -hmm. Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone, or whatever the title is for that one. It's something about going and telling, talking to bees. Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone. I, I, there are other words in there. I, I don't know by <laughs> Diana Gabaldon. It's coming out November 23rd, which I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. um, so I've decided to reread, well, re-listen to the series. Mm -hmm. And that's like a huge undertaking. Like the book I'm listening to now is over 33 hours. So yeah. it's going to take me a couple, it's probably going to take me two weeks to get through that one, which yeah. normally would, I, I get through like three books a week. So <laughs> um, yeah. This one's going to take a little bit longer, but yeah. um, I, I went to I went to listen to them, and I was like, and I saw that the first book there was like a I put it on hold, and then I looked at about how long it was. It said mm -hmm. about twenty weeks. I was like, oh my god! I'm like, you know what? I've re read that one like three or four times. It's okay if I skip it. Yeah. <laughs> Start with book yeah. number two. So I started book number two and two days into book number two, I got book number one. Oh. They must have like just purchased extra copies mm -hmm. for colds. Yeah. And, uh, but I was like, eh, I, I think I can skip it. So I'm just going with book number two forward. Um, because like I said, I have, I've read yeah. that, that book several times and I've seen that series 
from the TV show several times. So I'm like, I've, I've got that part of the story. Yeah, right? yeah. All the important parts anyway. So yes, yes. It's amazing how much I've forgotten from the books, which is why I'm rereading them before I get to yeah. the ninth book. So yeah. Um, so you're you're reading book two now. Mm -hmm. yes. Nice. Yeah, so it sounds like this will carry you through till the book comes out, basically. Like, especially depending on how long it takes to get them. Well, it yeah. looks like they're most of them. Most of the other books were available. It was just book one that had okay. a list. So, yeah. and I think it's one of those they purchased extra copies of yeah. it because it's been so popular. And yeah, right now we're rereading it. So yeah, well, if it takes you two weeks per book, that's sixteen weeks. Well, without book one, that's fourteen weeks. Okay. That sounds like it's getting you kind of close. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. You know, you know what? I think last time I listened to them all, I had like a vacation period where I just mm -hmm. I was home for like several days in a row, and I yeah. painted. So I just had the 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 thing playing all day as I painted. That sounds and really nice. It was. It was. It was a great yeah. way to pass the time, and yeah. it didn't feel like it was, wasn't as hard work. But I've got like. I totally associate painting my room with this one particular scene from yes. the series. Like I don't yeah. listen to it for hours. I don't know why this one scene mm -hmm. is the one I always think about. When yes. I think about painting my room. Yeah. I have books like that too. I can't, gosh, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but that will happen every now and then. Um, I'll be doing something. It's so I'll be doing like some task at my house and doing that task makes me think of this particular part in a book that happened while I was doing that task, which is even weirder probably because it's not a, it wasn't like a one-time thing, like painting your room. Like I've, I've done this task like weekly. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, but that's just maybe whatever's going on that really impacted you at that time. So now, you know, when I'm cleaning the bathroom mirror or whatever, I think of this part of this book. Yeah. Yeah. That's, in, and that's something that you don't get quite so much when you're reading a print book because you're never really doing something else at the same time as you're reading a print book. Exactly. Um, but oh, yeah. I, I guess I remember with the first Harry Potter book, I remember I was, very distinctly being in Japan, lying on the floor in my bed, because it was a futon on the floor, mm -hmm. feeling awful because I was sick. I was mm -hmm. just feeling awful and mm -hmm. being very hungry for delicious food because, you know, they were talking about the, the meals and then going to my refrigerator, which was green, and opening the door and looking inside and being like, guess I have settle for bacon and eggs and making myself breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I associate that with like the scene in the, where they're describing the meal and all yes. the and Harry Potter. So. Yes. I definitely have lots of sense memories of reading a print book. As I said, that's a lot of my reading experience rather than connecting to characters or that kind of thing. So I have a lot of that kind of stuff too. I was just thinking because you're never doing anything else while you're reading a print book, you don't, there's not really action so much that you, you associate with maybe foods or environment, but yeah, I definitely have lots of specifically lots of sense experiences around Harry Potter because of growing up reading them and being I upset. Not wanting to put the book down, but being so hungry, I had to. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's commitment, <laughs> right? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I oh um I'm honestly I'm between well. Not next to me. I, I wouldn't say I'm between books, but I'm reading a book that I haven't read in a couple days. I'm just, I don't know. Like, I've really been watching Better Call Saul. I've also, <laughs> I've also been watching This Is a Time Suck. Everyone hates it when it happens, but we do it anyway. Uh, Bachelor in Paradise is on, and that's two on two nights a week. They just like it's a very short, it's a very long show, but they cram it into a very short amount of time. So suddenly, like three to four hours of your week are now taken up with Bachelor in Paradise. Um, also, there's two two Real Housewives franchises on right now that I'm in keeping up with in real time. So it's been difficult to get my to get my reading in with all this quality programming that I have on. Um, yes. And for the record, Bachelor in Paradise is something I have on in the background when I do other things. That's like my current audio book because I... <laughs> And not just sit down and watch that show. Um, but my audiobook I'm listening to right now is um, 
your book by Seth Rogen, his new sort of memoir. Um, and that's fun because he has a lot of people who come in and do, you know, basically anything that's dialogue is read by somebody else. I haven't investigated too deeply, but I'm imagining some of the people are the real people. Young Seth Rogen is no way that can't be played by young Seth Rogen, but um, you know, so I'm not sure who everybody is, but there's also sound effects, um, which is kind of fun. He describes like this drive, this snowy drive with his uh, dad and like you hear like the wind blowing and you know, the tires and stuff like that. Um, so that's neat. Um, I will say I'm having a little bit of trouble with Seth Rogen's voice. His is kind of gravelly and just, the, he's, he's like a mumbler. Yeah. He just is. And um, so sometimes it just like his voice like drops in a way that I'm like, speak up. <laughs> but, but you know, that's what cranking that volume is for, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I will, I, that I've never, I've never had that issue with an audiobook ever. It's Will slowing separate. him down help, like with the oh, he's on. I, no, because he doesn't speak quickly. His okay. voice, just, it's his like the tone of his voice, like it. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Maybe other people would not have that trouble, but it's like his voice that like, kind of drops out. Mm, yeah. Um, and so at least for me, is I've never had that issue with an audiobook before. But um, oh my gosh, Mary has been watching Housewives. <laughs> Well, you guys, yeah, you guys today. Today. <laughs> Mary and I have some things to talk about. Um, oh, yes, Mary. Real, I will talk about it another time. But I do. Mary says that she fell into the Real Housewives hole because she ran out of dating shows to watch. Fair, fair enough. And uh, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> now, I have to ask, like these reality shows, is that I, I've never, I've never watched any of them. Yeah, is that something that like you purchase for the library? Like, do they come out with DVDs of them or like? No? They do not. So okay. you have to subscribe to things. Um, you have to. A lot of times, you just have to have a cable app. Yeah. Um, to watch the most current ones. Um, or something like Sling. Mm -hmm. Um, something like that. Uh, to watch the things that are on in real time. Um, you can watch some stuff through Hulu, and then the day after on the bachelor stuff. And then um, Peacock now has a lot of the, has the Bravo things, but um, no, it's not something that comes out on DVD. So those iconic moments that you love so much, you don't even have a way to, um, I don't know, to, to encapsulate. And so no, that's not something that we offer at the library because it doesn't come out on DVD. I was wondering, it was just like, because well, and Mary I pointed think I've never seen it. Yeah, Mary pointed out that some seasons of Drag Race and America's Next Top Model are on DVD, and that's true. Um, especially older stuff was on DVD. Yeah. Before streaming, but I think one thing about reality shows, especially competitions, Real Housewives is not, but um, is that they're kind of like a flash in the pan as yeah. far as once you know who won, are people going to pay money for that? Yeah. season of that show to rewatch um yeah. I and, and, and some people like and mary said some of them are on dvd project runway there was some project runway on dvd but i don't know that anybody really does it anymore for current ones the dvd industry is fading away slowly <laughs> yeah. So. yeah yeah um Sorry. Anyway, I didn't mean to to derail things with <laughs> my enthusiasm for Mary, whose opinion I very much respect on arts and entertainment to have openly admitted that she's been watching Real Housewives. It just, it means a lot. Well, if we are talking about watching quality entertainment, yeah. I'm going to do a plug for the library. Is that okay? I'm going to talk about the library on the library show? Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of September, um, September 23rd through October 3rd is the official week, even though it's like <laughs> 10 days or something, um, for the Manhattan Short Film Festival. So during that week at the library, we have several showings of the Manhattan Short Films. Um, what it is, is there are 10 short films. And so all of them are like less than 20 minutes. There's even one that's five minutes in like so many seconds, <laughs> I don't really remember. Um, but these are short films that people created and they were submitted and the, these are the 10 finalists for the prize. Um, 
you come to the library, you watch all 10 in one sitting. Um, so it takes a little over two hours. Um, you watch the films, there's a 10 minute intermission in the middle. And then at the end, you vote for your favorite film and your favorite actor. And I submit all of those votes to the Manhattan Short film people mm -hmm. and they tally all the votes. And then on October 4th, they will announce the winners. So it's like we actually get to take part and vote for our favorite mm -hmm. films in this film festival. And it's really cool. And yeah. everyone is welcome. It's it's a really fun time. And we will have prepackaged snacks. So mm -hmm. um nice. but feel free to bring your own movie snacks, whatever mm -hmm. you know you like to take yeah. with you. Sneak yeah. you sneak in your bag, whatever you sneak in your bag. Um, right. because nobody wants to pay Right. Your prices, right? Um, I mean, I always buy popcorn and soda when I'm at the theater, but there may be a candy bar in my pocket as well. There may be a gallon size Ziploc bag of popcorn I popped at home in my bag. So I, I do like the popcorn <laughs> at the theater. So I, I do buy that. Yes. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we're, we will be having the Manhattan Short Film Festival. Um, awesome. October, no. September 24th is when we have our first showing and then uh, through October 2nd is when we have our last. So great. Um, yes. Yes. Well, I have been to that the past two years that we've had it. It is so much fun and uh, it's just a really unique opportunity because this does play all over the world, but most of the places it plays, you have to pay money to get in. And at the library, you do not have to pay any money to see. And the movies, um, the short films, in many years, at least one of them goes on to be nominated for the short film Oscar, which is pretty fun because in most years, you also don't really get a chance to see any of those. You got to like kind of really work to see those Oscar nominated short films. And so um, you go into the, watching the Oscars like, oh, I've seen that one. That one was really good. Right. Um, yes. So it's just, it's really fun and a really cool opportunity. And I am really glad that we're doing it again this year, last year made it impossible, but thank you for, for hosting it again. I'm really excited to have it back again. And the, the movies are just so varied. Like you will have funny ones and sad ones and mm -hmm. sweet ones and scary ones. It's just like, they're mm -hmm. all over the map. So you yeah, know, it really, you know, and there might be one that you don't like, but it's going to be less than 20 minutes. And then the next right. one you may love. So it's it's really right. interesting to see just like how different they are. And yeah. Andrea, <laughs> you are very, very late. But we love that you're here with us again. <laughs> and you honestly didn't miss much except us promoting the Manhattan Short Film Festival, which is really, really cool. And hopefully you'll get a chance to attend. And talking um, about reality TV. I was going to skip over that part in case then maybe no one... If someone else was just joining us now, they would never need to know. Um, and, and it's still in the back of my mind is spinning like, oh my goodness, I'm just so excited about reality television. Um, yeah, and and uh, you because you get to vote for like your favorite, it also is just fun to talk about it. So like after, after it, you know, people will be discussing what their favorite one was and what they liked, you know, what they liked best about the different movies. Um, and I recommend from two years ago, that one, Sylvia, was so heartbreaking, so so yeah, sweet and sad. Yeah. So, um, and I've seen mention of Sylvia. I've seen that, like after seeing it at the at the yeah yeah me too. I felt right? I ran across the it was on Pinterest, and I've got like you know short story like stuff in mm -hmm. there. And I found one about that that situation. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, thanks for mentioning that because that will be really fun. To a close, we feel like it's time to put lattes with librarians on the shelf for a while. And so yeah. we'll be, be doing this every Friday. Um, we're not gonna disappear completely from your lives. Um, we are planning to come back October 8th, but that will be a lunchtime lattes with librarians get together. Um, so come Lunching back. Lunching with librarians. <laughs> Lattes at lunch. I don't know. Lattes at lunch. Something. We're something. working on the branding still, clearly. Any ideas, feel free to share. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's we, this has been a great opportunity to sit down and talk with you all and share news about what's happening at the library. But 
we're getting back into the swing of things with being open and people are coming in and it's um it just feels like now is probably a good time to mm -hmm. to pull back on, yeah. on, on this it has been so fun though and it has been i think it's been so much more and I don't want to say it's so much more fun than we thought, but it's just been, it's given us so much more and been so much more than we thought yeah. uh, initially that it was going to be. And I'm so glad that we got the chance to do it for so long. I know. I, I really expected it to be like just last summer and mm -hmm. then it would stop. And then, but the pandemic didn't. The pandemic didn't <laughs> we're just stop, so. going. Librarians who lunch. I like that. <laughs> I like that, Judith. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, it, it was much longer than we anticipated, um, but it's been fun. And I really feel like it kind of changed the way I read. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I feel like I was never one of those people who was, unless it was something that I was really super excited about, mm -hmm. I didn't rush out and read something when it was brand new. Yeah. Um, you know? There's always my to be read list is mm -hmm. super long. There's always plenty to choose from, mm -hmm. but because of holds list and whatnot, I generally mm -hmm. would avoid new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I I felt like with with the show, I wanted to be more yeah on top of what what was new and be able to talk yeah. about new stuff, not stuff that's three years old that I was finally getting around to reading. So I feel like I, I this year. I've changed the way I read and making an effort to get out there and read the new stuff. Yeah. And that has helped a little bit with my um, readers advisory because yeah. we read the new stuff and yeah. knowing more about it makes it easier to talk about. So. Yes. And as we, for readers advisory, like, I don't know, reading the new stuff, even if that's not available anymore, you, since you've read it, you know what to connect it with for something that might be available. So yeah. like if somebody comes in, and you know, is looking for something like this book, and that yeah. book's checked out, and they want something right now. You, but you've read it, so you have a better feel for it. Yeah, for me, it's a similar thing. Um, I mean, I buy a lot of books. I buy a lot of used books, so a lot of my reading has been a lot. Like in the past, a lot of my reading is is stuff that I've purchased and things that are used and things that are not new, or because of my job, things that are brand new, but it's just because they come in and I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? And a lot of nonfiction because yeah. of my job. Um, I've read a lot less nonfiction in the past <laughs> between this show. I've read a lot more fiction. Um, and I've read more, I've been more, I've had more follow through with reading. Like I won't give up. I know on, on here I talk a lot about giving up on a book, but I give up even more before. Um, because I just kind of, I want to have a better appreciation and a better sense of what is this book? Again, mm -hmm. there's reader's advisory skills to be, just be able to finish it and to get a sense of what is this author like and other authors that can compare. Um, so I've had better follow through and I've read wider, read more widely across genres um, yes. than I did before because it would just be books that appealed to me before. And now I'm picking books like trying to figure out what might appeal to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, and then finally, the thing that has probably the reading that has changed the most besides less nonfiction is I read m way more about what books are coming out. That is not something that I did at all before this show, because all the new books came to, through my department. There was no, like for my own personal reading tastes, there was no need for me to do research. Right. Um, exactly. To follow authors and to dis discover what's coming next. I just didn't need to do that for me. But for doing <laughs> the show, I mean, I, re I spend so much time now reading about what what's coming next, reading mm -hmm. book news, all those book riot email lists, all those things I, I pay so much more attention to. And because of that, I've discovered so many more things that I like. Right. Um, so it's been, it's certainly benefited me, but I, I think that that might be the biggest change is I just didn't follow any of that because I didn't feel like I needed to. Right. Yeah. I never thought about the fact that you really don't need to follow what's coming out because that's a huge part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm always reading reviews and like what's forthcoming and, you know, purchasing books months in advance and then forgetting mm -hmm. that they're coming out. Like mm -hmm. that's yeah. what I'm really good at. But, um, but yeah, 
So, yeah. but you, it just, everything comes across your desk. So you get to touch all yeah. of it and see all of it. So yeah, I guess. Yeah. And when I order it, you've already done all the work. I just order it. So I see that I have the list of titles in front of me. I have the list of authors. I have to do, hold it. I have to rotate things. I have to do parts of my job that gets me in those records. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, she has one. She has one. Like I, you've done it all for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now I know about things more in advance and I'm so much, I don't know. It just, it's completely changed. And that, but that does make me much, like you said, I am so much more confident about Reader's Advisory now, which used to really intimidate me in part because I only read stuff that I liked. And right. you don't have to have read something to give someone reading suggestions. You should right. be able to give people suggestions regardless, but having read more broadly helps. Absolutely. And I, I think it's really funny the way when we started out, you were like nonfiction, nonfiction, nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And I was like, romance, romance, romance. And <laughs> I'm reading other stuff. Like I've branched out like the murder, the th I, you know, I've got the thrillers. Mm -hmm. I've got, um, I, I don't know, but I, but I've branched out where now you. Yes. The romance. Novel. I know. I know. I was looking in my reading log to see when I read my first, and I think my first, technically the first romance I read was even before, well, I've read them before for school because yes, I paid money to attend a class wherein I was assigned a task of reading a romance novel. That's how that worked. Um, <laughs> I read a Carolyn Brown in my reader's advisory class, a Carolyn Brown cowboy novel um, was my very first romance. And there was a very long time before I read another one. Let me tell, let me tell you. But I had tried a few different times, and I've dabbled here and there. But the first one that I read, and kind of, I, I just I I did enjoy it, and sort of was the Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Okay, yeah. And it's about two people who share flat. share a flat. <laughs> um, he works surprise, surprise. He works nights, and she works days. And so they're never there at the same time. So it's fine that there's only one bed and it's fine that there's like, it's just one room and they leave each other post-its and naturally they fall in love. But um, she's had a few more since then. So I've read a few of those, but I read that in 2019 and then I hadn't read anything else. And then it just something about doing this show and talking to you about romance has me listening obsessively to the undercover or to the romance book club. It somehow it's all led here. And I definitely that is fabulous. I, I love that. And I don't. I, I was looking through the log and I was trying to figure out how it happened, and I don't really know. But I definitely came out of this show. <laughs> Do you remember when we both went through that phase where we were both like reading Tana French? And that's actually another one that I would not have read if not for the show, because yeah. you talked about it. People talked about it in the comments, and um, I would not have read any of her books if it weren't for the show. And I probably read. I think I've read three. Yeah. I love her books. And I think it's one of those, like, one of those really good suggestions that came up and you're just like, well, I guess I'll give it a try. Yeah. Andrea is also listening to the Bromance Book Club. I'm impressed that you're not giving up on it. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you influence Andrea's reading. Hashtag influencer. Andrea, tell us how you like it in the comments if you feel comfortable. If you do not feel comfortable, that's also fine. Um, but yeah, reading all those, reading about the new things that are coming out, um, really, I don't know, it just kind of like broadens, I'm like, especially because it's all publisher material, so they make it sound really good. Right. But you're like, um, you're like, oh, well, that, that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. And you just, I just, it's incredible how, just how quickly it kind of broadens your reading interests. So far, very enjoyable, fun and light is Andrea, think, is Andrea's review of her experience listening to the Bromance Book Club. Good. I'm glad you feel that way because that's how it should feel. <laughs> I, I do love book reviews and they do have a way of, I, I, it's it's hard because like you see the publisher material which makes it sound fabulous. Mm -hmm. And then you see someone's review of it, which can <laughs> also make it sound fabulous or it can just like tear it to shreds. And you're like, okay, I can skip on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Reviews are very interesting, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, so, and then you have to wonder sometimes: is it just that reviewer doesn't like that mm -hmm. thing, or because, like, I I heard somebody say that they hated, um, 
The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue Mm -hmm. by the E. Schwab, who, Mm -hmm. which I think is like the best book I've read all year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who is this person? What are they thinking? I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know, it just, I, so it's sometimes I'm just like, why does one book fabulous for one reader and awful Mm -hmm. for another? You know, that just makes me wonder. I really like Goodreads reviews um, in part for that reason, because I like it when people, and I try to do this in my own Goodreads reviews, I like it when people explain what worked and what didn't for them and why, because then that that gives you that information. It's like if someone's like, I really like X, Y, and Z in my books, you know, I really like high suspense and the suspense in this wasn't high. And if that's not what you're looking for, you might appreciate that drawn out, yeah. you know, more leisurely paced book. Um, and so I, when I, when I write Goodreads reviews, I try to, I try, I actually, I try to write them. I try to write them in part for librarians because I use Goodreads yes. for genre fine things. Um, and genre fine. I mean, <laughs> I love how you turn that into a, a verb. That, that's how I think of it anyway. That didn't even, that didn't even, I didn't even think about that coming out of my mouth. That's how, that's how I describe it. Um, and so, yeah, when someone says, you know, I, I especially like those reviews. If they have, I know this in a romance, this would be a spoiler, but when people say like, you know, this didn't have a happily ever after ending, then I'm like, well, that should not be in our romance section. Right. Th- things like that are helpful. So I try to make mine like that, but you're right. Everyone has, people have different, very different like, core responses to what they read and two people can have a totally different which I mean, we've talked about with your inner narrator too, and with yeah. just what you get out of reading a book, which has been another thing that's so fun fun to talk about on here is what people, what other people like to read and yeah. why. And I've really enjoyed that too. It's like a book club where you don't all have to read the same book. It just boggles my mind that other people don't see the story like the way I do. Like it's mm-hmm. very vivid and that just, I'm like, well, what do you get out of a book if you don't get the, <laughs> the mm-hmm. visual story? The words and the experience and the atmosphere. And but I feel I get like the atmosphere with, in. With, with the visual, you know? But you still, it's like, it's like you're building it of words, though. You're not like seeing it. You're just like crafting a feeling. It's a feeling that I have. I don't know. I just... I don't know. I don't, I, it's very different. It's just a very yeah. different experience that we yeah. have when we read the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, as I said that one day, like that's part, like I don't like, that's why I don't really enjoy like world building books because I don't want to read all those words that have built this world that to, for a visual purposes, you know? So things like fantasy and historical fiction, I'd rather just read the history and I'd rather not read the fantasy at all. (laughs) Um, But I'd rather just read the history because those are true Mm -hmm. and the world building aspect is kind of lost on me. Okay. We'll just be different. We'll just be different. Yeah. But, (laughs) but keep that in mind. If you're a fantasy reader and or a historical fiction reader, you might like the other one because it has similar elements. Yeah. Similar requirements of its readers. <laughs> so, is there anything else that, like, you feel like we should touch on before we? I don't. I don't really think so. But the, this is sad. It, I know it, it's very sad to 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 say goodbye. But we're not gone, gone because we'll be back in October. We'll be back at the beginning beginning of October, and we're going to talk about new fall releases. Uh, fall's a really big time in publishing, so we'll talk about things that come out in September, and things that are coming out in October. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> we'll be able to go over all of that. So we won't be gone forever, and then we'll be back again after that too. Just. Oh, yeah. Irregularly. We're not we're not going anywhere. <laughs> and if you get really sad, you can come visit us at the library. Yes. <laughs> you walk around the back of Northwest and knock on Allison's window and wave. And it'll be just like watching her on the screen to seeing her through the window, right? <laughs> and you'll definitely really, really startle me. So that will be another bonus. Um <laughs> to see me jump out of my chair. <laughs> 
I almost sent one of my coworkers to the emergency room last week. I think you told me about, I don't know if it was me or us on here, but yeah, I think, actually I think it was on here because you were oh. talking about how startled you were because your office, your back faces your yes. door. Yeah. Yeah. We scared each other that morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and when you work in a quiet space, like especially at Northwest when we're not open or like during the pandemic year when we didn't have customers in the building, like it's very, you're kind of just in your own head. It's quiet. And then it's very easily easy to become startled. And that happens to me all the time at work. And it doesn't make any sense why I'm scared when I walk in the bathroom and I see someone in the bathroom. Like it's a public restroom. Right? Like yeah. there's a very high chance there's going to be someone in it. But like, why do I jump when I open the door? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really funny to me when I come home and I startle my mother. Cause like when I come home, the dog doesn't make any noise when I come through the door. Sure. He, he's excited and he runs. Yeah. And he doesn't bark. Yeah. And then I'll walk into the kitchen where my mother is and I'll say hi. And she, yeah, <laughs> she jumps. How dare you? Yeah. I'm like you knew I was coming home for lunch. You're making it right now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we all so, just get in our own heads, daydreaming, thinking about that book we read. Yeah, we, we scare each other all the time. And it's really funny because we both have that huge reaction when we're startled. And then the reaction scares the other one. So it's like this vicious cycle of just scaring each other. Right. Because <laughs> that also happens at work. I react noisily in fright. And when I see somebody and then that causes them to jump and yeah. scream because I screamed <laughs> when I saw their face. I mean, what that seems natural. <laughs> right. <laughs> so don't, um, don't be surprised when we pop up again in October. <laughs> yes. Right. Don't be surprised by our, our smiling faces. We'll be happy to be here again. And uh, thank you for being with us this whole. Yes. It's been a like, wonderful months. weird journey, but we've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I know what I have. Yeah. Well, I guess we should wrap it up, but we will see you. We'll definitely uh, make a scheduled like a post that we promote beforehand so you don't miss it since it's not an every week thing like, that I'm sure is on all of your work calendars. Um, and we'll make sure we make that post ahead of time so that you can prepare. And it will be at lunchtime. We're thinking noon. Mm -hmm. You can eat your lunch with us. October 8th, so. October 8th at noon. All right, guys. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye.